And my first guest joins me via satellite from Southern California. Mr. Richard Serber is the CEO of Nexia Holdings Incorporated, symbols NXHD. Uh, Richard, good to see you again. It's good to be back, Don. Now, Richard, uh, Nexia Holdings describes itself as a diversified company. Your operations include Landis Aveda concept salons, commercial real estate, even an entertainment arm. Can you give us a brief overview of the company today? Well, yeah, you have the three areas of operation there. Um, the focus, or my focus, over the last couple of years has been on the salon entity. Um, they operate according to the Aveda guidelines, um, and we have two what they call lifestyle Aveda salons, which means that we carry a, a full array of Aveda products. Um, and we have, uh, of course, uh, you know, big plans for that concept moving forward because we've enjoyed a lot of success uh, with our flagship location. Uh, with respect to the entertainment division, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Lionsgate film. That's uh, kind of a model we might uh, try to pursue with respect to that. Um, Revel's, uh, Revel's focus right now is on producing or acquiring independent films. And then, of course, we have our commercial real estate uh, division as well, which is just that. We've been watching the company pretty closely since the last time we featured you. You've released impressive revenue numbers recently for the salons. Uh, tell us about that. Well, um, you know, while a lot of uh, salons, I think up to, I think 2,800 of them have gone out of business in, in Utah, um, you know, unfortunately um, for them, we've been fortunate enough to probably pick up some of that business and we've actually become stronger over the last couple of years. So. Um, I think the releases you're referring to, you know, in July uh, we did a release and our revenues were up actually 12% over the comparable month in 2009. And then we did, you know, an August uh, release as well where the revenues were up 8% uh, over the comparable month uh, in 2009 as well. So, you know, a very encouraging trend. Um, I think, you know, one of the reasons for those uh, revenue increases is we were preparing for the opening of another lifestyle salon. So you know, we overstaffed, and we were able to uh, fill the books of all those stylists. Kind of segue to my next question. Do you have plans to open other salons in the near future? Well, I think the idea is to uh, you know, grow the business uh, sort of organically in the Salt Lake count and Utah counties initially. You know, um, I have my eyes... Uh, set on, you know, hopefully six company-owned locations, um, you know, within a 50-mile radius of our flagship location. Um, and then, you know, from there we'll look at potential franchising opportunities, and then we'll look to acquiring other uh, salons, perhaps out of the state, that are, that have, you know, exceptional managers in place and that are already doing a fantastic job of managing their business. Richard, you mentioned, and the company recently announced the acquisition of Revel Entertainment. They're a producer of independent films. Uh, what are your expectations from this deal? Well, um, the staff at Revel have actually done three independent films so far. The first was a movie called Moving McAllister, which actually uh, was briefly on the big screen here in Los Angeles and also in Salt Lake City. Um, and then uh, and then went to, to Showtime for an extended period of time. The next film that they've done is a film called Repo, and the film that Nexia Holdings has a majority interest in is called um, The Cane Files. Um, and the expectation there is to produce or acquire um, what I'm hoping to be about 10 independent films over the next, uh, let's say, three to four years and you know my expectation is is that uh, you know one of those at least one of those films does very well, and the remaining films uh, you know that we produce in house we keep them you know within budget and that they do uh, you know fairly well as well. But the but the the hope and expectation is that one of these films is a real winner, and I'm hoping the Cane Files is 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 the film that does it. Well, you know, you're off to a good start. Uh, one of the actors from that film, The Cane Files, was recently awarded Best Actor at the San Diego Film Festival. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I attended the San Diego, uh, the screening at the San Diego Film Festival, and the audience uh, reaction was, was very positive. And Drew Fuller is actually the actor that took, uh, took Best Actor. 
I mean, some other notable actors in the film were William Atherton, um, William Devane, Ethan Embry, um, all of them, you know, really strong characters. You know, the film is an action drama. Um, so I think that our the foreign rights uh, will be a, a lucrative, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> area as far as distribution goes. And then, you know, uh, what we're going to do is, is do a little bit of in-house marketing with respect to um, domestic distribution uh, with respect to game files. Let's start the marketing right now. You provided us a trailer of the movie. Let's take a look at that. You know who we're after? He's suspect in over 15 contracts of his. You've got him in the middle of a job. You think you've got him in the middle of a job? I'm a job. I'm very trustworthy. You've got a choice to make. You can finish this job, and your kid will get the best care any kid could have. Or you could not finish the job, and your kid will die. We're big boys. We ought to be able to figure out how to get what we want. You realize it's going to end badly for you, right? Well, that looks exciting. Uh, you can count me in and buy a ticket. Now, in the last week, the company filed financials for the three and six months into June 30th. But what I found interesting, Richard, were the comments you made in the press release surrounding those filings. you want to share those with us again, please? Well, um, the company is uh, looking to get back to current status. We're, we are trading the pink sheets right now. Um, the ultimate goal is to... Uh, uh, get the financials, you know, out on a timely basis, file a registration statement with the Securities and Exchange Commission, get back to fully reporting status. But, uh, you know, as to the content of the, the June numbers, one of the things that was uh, very positive in my mind is that we reduced our uh, G&A expenses by about 50% while still increasing our top line revenues. Um, so for the six months, I think our top line revenues were about $1.1 million dollars. And um, it's looking even better for the, for the last half of the year. Well, what do we expect to see from the company next year in 2011? Well, you know, my hope is uh, that we're able to grow the revenues at our second uh, salon location um, such that just the increase in revenues with respect to that salon should increase top line revenues by about uh, 40, maybe as much as 50 percent if we hit our revenue targets. Um, my hope is that we get foreign and uh, domestic distribution rights on the cane files, and you know that number could be, you know, as much a, you know many many times what our current revenue is uh, uh, for for 2010. And then also, you know, I hope to uh, I hope to at least identify uh, several additional uh, additional locations for our salon operations. Um, so. You know, lots of stuff in 2011. Well, Richard, why is this a good time right now for folks to take a closer look at Nexia Holdings? Well, you know, I'm hoping that the Kane Files is a huge success. Um, if it is and we hit out of the park, then, uh, you know, the, the current price the stock is trading at, a penny, right now on 55 million shares issued and outstanding you know, puts our market cap with, uh, for the common stock at only $550,000. We have this Kane Files, um, which is an asset that uh, is uh, worth many times the current market cap. We have, you know, salons that uh, hopefully by the end of 2011 are generating close to $3 million worth of revenues just for the current two locations. Um, and if you look at the chart for the for the for Nexia stock, the you know price per share has gone from as low as two tenths of a penny to as high as almost you know two pennies, and during the year it's been as high as 20 cents after a restructuring, um, and you can see the lot of momentum is building uh, with re with respect to the stock. So you know I would encourage people to take a look at our our Facebook pages for the Cane Files to check out the Cane Files, check out our Landis Lifestyle Salon Facebook page and websites. And I think that your viewers will, uh, will definitely see that uh, right now um, is the time to take a look at that at, at Nexia. And, you know, it could be, uh, I hate to use a cliche, but, um, you know, ground level opportunity. Once again, Nexia Holdings, NXHD uh, is their stock symbol. Richard, of course, we're reinitiating coverage of the company this week. Looking forward to more updates from you over the next three months. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show. I look forward to seeing you again, Don.